Welcome in, everybody, to the flagship podcast. I am Horns 24-7 columnist Chip Brown, live from Fayetteville, uh, joined by my fearless co-host, the one and only managing editor of Horns 24-7, Taylor Estes. Taylor, um, we are reacting to Arkansas's 40-21 beatdown, really. Um, This was a game that Arkansas controlled from the beginning, and it was just a slow, steady uh, beatdown, 16 to nothing at halftime, uh, 33 to seven. By the time backup quarterback Casey Thompson gets into the game after nine failed, mo- mostly failed offensive uh, possessions, this was a jolt, I think, to a lot of people because the offense struggled so miserably. And, and look, Redshirt freshman starter Hudson Card was in a cauldron tonight. Arkansas, first sellout since 2017. They were amped beyond belief. Their students were loud the whole game. Um, And it was a tough environment for Hudson Card. Yeah, it definitely was, Chip. And one thing that you, you know, I feel like Texas just really couldn't get any type of momentum going like throughout the game, really. I mean, you, you go back to the, you know, first quarter when it looks like Texas may have like recovered a, um, you know, pump fumble, basically fumbled punt. And then, um, you know, the guy's foot was out of bounds. And then anytime that Texas scored, it seemed like Arkansas just answered, you know, they didn't score many touchdowns, but when they did score touchdowns, they came off of Texas, you know, scoring drives for a touchdown. So just, you know, basically there wasn't really this was a perfect storm for Texas to really, you know, prove if it's um, basically what, you know, um, they need to be to be playing for conference championships or college football playoff championships, or if they are going to like, you know, struggle through adversity with a lot of first time starters, mainly at quarterback there. And I think that that's the latter is what happened. And I think we saw that throughout the game chip. Yeah. I mean, the, the first question that comes to mind, I think for every Texas fan is why didn't you go to Casey Thompson, the four-year quarterback, sooner? Mm -hmm. I mean, there were three, there were five three and outs on the first seven possessions. um, And then they went three and out to open the second half with Hudson Card still at quarterback. I mean, Steve Sarkeesian went for it on fourth and a long one from Texas's 43 in the third quarter before bringing in Casey Thompson. Yeah. That tells you either something is horribly wrong with that relationship between Steve Sarkeesian and Casey Thompson, um, or we were getting some word salad maybe about how close that battle is and, you know, in fall camp and, and look quarterback, I mean, coaches have their guy. We saw this to some degree in, what, 2018 when Sam Ellinger struggled in a loss to Maryland, had two chances in the final five minutes to to lead Texas to go-ahead points, and Shane Bouchelle didn't get a look, and, and Tom Herman stuck with Sam Ellinger, and, and Sam had went on to have a really good year in 2018. That was the year they beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. If Steve Sarkeesian has Hudson Card as his guy, that still doesn't mean you can't bring Casey Thompson in like Lincoln Riley did in the first half of the Texas OU game last year where Spencer Rattler was struggling. He brings in Tanner Mordecai just to give Spencer Rattler maybe a chance to watch and let things slow down a little bit. And then Rattler finishes the game and and ends up helping OU win that game. It just is puzzling to me that when Steve Sarkeesian came in before the Louisiana game, he said both Hudson Card and Casey were going to play, and then we'll evaluate after game one. But then Casey only got garbage time against Louisiana and then only gets garbage time tonight. Some people will say, well, Casey's two touchdown drives and going two of two on third down and, you know, that blood and guts, Sam Ellinger-esque touchdown run, the two-yard touchdown run where he makes contact with four defenders. 
doesn't matter because it was all in garbage time. But at some point you have to say, well, when does Casey Thompson's production matter in his career? He's led Texas to points on 10 of his 14 drives. And that's got to count for something. I mean, it, he looked calm. He looked poised on third and four. He had a check down receiver wide open in the flat and he waited until Jordan Whittington, you know, came across on a crosser. He hit him perfect for a 15 yard gain. I mean, he just stood in the pocket, delivered a perfect strike. Didn't, didn't panic. Didn't take the check down short of the sticks. He, he waited. He knew Whittington was coming open. He just, he looked comfortable and he, he made plays. He made plays with his legs when he needed to. And, and, Two straight touchdown drives. I mean, double-digit drives, long drives, sustained drives, the kind of drives that defense needed early, Taylor, uh, when the defense was playing well. I mean, they had two big red zone stops, one after a blocked punt. Um, you know, Cameron Dicker drops the snap, picks up the ball, and punts it right into a Arkansas defender, gets it blocked. They recover it at the Texas, you know, 24 um, and Texas, the defense holds them to a field goal there. And again, we're only down 16, nothing at, at halftime. Um, it felt two or three scores worse than that, but that's the puzzling part for me because the team, the defense was fighting. They ended up making the biggest play of the game on BJ Foster's tip to himself interception that set up the offense for, uh, the only touchdown with Hudson card in the game, a short field touchdown. And, you know, that's when they needed a spark and they got it from BJ Foster. And then the offense, you know, stalls out again after that with, you know, going forward on fourth down and failing um, and running behind Denzel Okafor who struggled all night. I didn't get that. And then, you know, they had the fumble. So it just, it was just uh a really puzzling drop off from game one to game two. And, and it seemed like there was an obvious situation that needed addressing and it didn't get addressed. And afterward, Steve Sarkeesian said, look, we hindsight's 2020, but we made the decision when we made it. And then when I asked him, what's the situation at quarterback going forward, he said, a little early to be asking that we'll look at it. And, and then I said to Sark, what did you see in Hudson that made you, you know, keep coming back to him? It's about the game. It's about the week of preparation. And I thought Hudson had a good week of preparation. He said, it's easy to praise the quarterback when things are good, easy to criticize when things are bad, uh, but it takes 11 players collectively. So, you know, it sure sounds like Hudson Card is Steve Sarkeesian's guy. And I don't know what you tell Casey Thompson. Well, I think, Chip, you have to think that there is a a little bit of a growing pains that you're going to have to go through if you are going to go with a redshirt freshman quarterback. The reality is, I mean, when you bring up going back to, you know, the Sam Ellinger situation with Shane Bouchelle, I mean, the biggest reason you we can say whatever we want about Tom Herman and his success at Texas, but I think that the way he handled the situation, the quarterback situation in 2018, um, with you know Sam Ellinger and Shane Bouchelle both on the roster, both contributing, I thought he handled it well because his biggest thing was he didn't want to shake Sam's confidence. And so I think that probably a little bit of that may be playing a role a little bit of you know, the last thing that a redshirt freshman quarterback, especially in his second overall start in his first ever start in a road game, the last thing that he needs is for him to be thinking that the coaches are losing confidence in him. And then that's going to just make it spiral out of control. I think that this is, you know, we keep saying that this is why Steve Sarkeesian gets paid, you know, $5 million to make these type of decisions. You know, we can sit here and we can nitpick depending on, if it should have happened earlier in the game or not, I would be a little bit surprised if his maybe a little bit of his hesitation was to not shake Hudson, you know, in a way, especially coming out of halftime when, 
it seemed like things were starting at least early on in uh, the third quarter to maybe be a little bit closer of a game than it ended up being. So that's kind of where I, I mean, just from the outside looking in, I feel like that probably had to have played a role. Now we can argue about it all we want, but you know, the reality is he's got to go with who he thinks he has the best chance in the future with. And if that's Hudson card, you know, with four years of eligibility left, do you really want to shake his confidence game two of his career? Like, I don't, I think that there it's a, it's a really thin type tightrope that he essentially is walking right now with the whole situation at the quarterback, which we knew all along. I think that we probably didn't think that it would be this big of a situation after week two of the season. Yeah. And I'll summarize said, I thought the safe decision would be to start Casey in the opener and the, and the Arkansas game really primarily because of the Arkansas game that, 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 that environment was every bit as chaotic as I thought it would be. And if the four-year guy with the chip on his shoulder and some moxie when he gets into games, if he couldn't handle that environment, then you you go with the redshirt freshman quarterback and never look back. But it was tough to, if you go with the young guy, right, to start the season, there's kind of no turning back, right? Because once you go with the young guy, you're, you're saying he's our guy. Mm-hmm. And... And when they didn't play Casey in the first half of the Louisiana game, there wasn't much evaluating going on. And and I think you're right uh, tonight in the Arkansas game, Steve, Steve Sarkeesian wanted Hudson card to have some success mm-hmm. um, before he, you know, maybe took him out. But at some point you got to look out for the rest of the team and just say, we got to just let him see the game for a second. You know, that's why Sark, he's such a good offensive mind because he knows how to coach quarterbacks. He knows how to clean them up after a situation like that. You just say, Hey, Hudson, take a, take a minute, watch what's going on. I'm going to give Casey a, a chance. And, and then, you know, you disarm that situation and, and, you know, Steve Sarkeesian said, we're going to need them both. Right. He said that repeatedly through the summer. And, and then when it was clear that Hudson was, you know, struggling. He was holding the ball. He had guys open. He didn't see them. He was losing his eyes downfield. And then when he ran, he was even running late and it was three and out three, you know, five, three and outs in the first seven possessions. Yeah. At some point you got to look at the other guys on the field and say, okay, we got to change things up because our defense is getting gassed. Right. Well, and how much, I mean, there, there's definitely some other factors I think that played into that. I mean, we talked coming out of the Louisiana game, you know, if you look at the stat sheet, it didn't look like a poor performance by the Texas offensive line, but that was one of the glaring issues in that game. If you watched every snap of the game, there was, you know, really poor play across the offensive line. And that continued tonight, Chip. I mean, there were times where, you know, somebody did something wrong and the, you know, guys came unblocked, untouched right in Hudson Card's face. And that was early in the game. I mean, that's the, that's exactly what, if you're Arkansas, what they needed to do. You know, we talked about that. The biggest concerns was if he, if Hudson Card could keep that even keeled approach that Steve Sarkeesian has commended him for, for so long, you know, throughout ever since he got to Texas, I feel like he's been commending you know, Hudson for that, that kind of calm demeanor that he does have. And that was the perfect key for Arkansas to disrupt the success of the offense. Because once that started, I mean, you know, the offensive line couldn't even open up holes enough for Bijan Robinson. Bijan Robinson made that offensive line look better against Louisiana than it actually was. And he, while like, I think he finished with 69 yards rushing it was 3.6 yards per carry for a Bijan Robinson performance that's low for him and it was just because the offensive line really struggled you know the Texas receivers they I think that they had 23 targeted passes now they weren't all perfect but they only brought in 13 so you know 56 percent 56.5 percent I think it was of their reception you know percentage that of the targeted passes they got that doesn't help you know I mean and you know I think that Hudson, or excuse me, Casey Thompson, you know, showed that he could kind of put the game on his shoulders a little bit at the end of that game. But at some point, it's like, 
it shouldn't be that way because regardless if it's Hudson Card, regardless if it's Casey Thompson starting at, at quarterback, both of them, I mean, Casey still has yet to start a game at quarterback. And so you have to expect some sort of ups and downs there. And if they're not getting the help of the guys around them, uh, especially in a, an environment, you know, you witnessed it firsthand. I did not. So you, you can talk way more about this, especially a hospital road environment with a, you know, a team that you, this was the 79th time you face off against like that is, that's the worst situation possible. I think for either quarterback in that situ in the role, you know, it's a starter. And so that has to get cleaned up. Those receivers have to, if, if it's close, catch the dang ball, you know, I mean, right, right. Uh, there were some uncatchable balls. I get that, but there were quite a few drops and, you know, crucial, crucial drops in that game. And that definitely does not help whoever it is, the, but the first time, you know, starter at quarterback for Texas. Yeah. I mean, it was, there were breakdowns, uh, in every phase you had, um, you know, Cameron Dicker dropping that punt snap, um, getting his punt blocked. Uh, Dicker missed a 52 yard field goal attempt. I mean, 52 yards is 52 yards. And, um, and then, you know, the, the defense gave up some long runs. Now I'll give Arkansas credit as they improved their lead. They started going up tempo and running the ball and not giving Texas's defense a chance to sub. And, and so Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator at Arkansas, basically just did to Texas what Steve Sarkeesian did to Louisiana last week, where he, you know, talked about eliminating counting possessions and eliminating the opportunity for a comeback because Casey Thompson comes into the game with a minute 50 left in the third quarter and it's 33 to seven. He leads two long touchdown drives in part because Arkansas was dropping, you know, rushing three, dropping eight, which they were doing most of the night. And it was confusing Hudson card. And, and then um, they just were running, you know, Arkansas was running the ball up tempo and just gassing Texas's defense, which was on the field way too long and didn't get the break it needed or the, the charge to get back into the game until it was too late. So, it's going to be interesting, Taylor, because the coach, um, you know, Steve Sarkeesian has to, the players don't have a voice in, in that they, they don't get to say, Hey coach, we think this quarterback should start or over this quarterback, right. but they're the way they play does have something to say. And players started making plays when Casey came in the game, Jordan Whittington caught that 15 yard pass on third and four. You know, I can't explain the off nature of a lot of Texas's game tonight. It was a wicked tough environment, and you hope leaders were born tonight. Um, you know, but it was tough, and you're right. The offensive line struggled, and, you know, Alfred Collins got run over at the goal line twice, including a touchdown run. You're wondering what's going on there because he's so you know he's such a physical specimen how how are they not getting him coached up or whatever and and so it was frustrating night across the board for texas fans and and steve sarkeesian's gotta he's gotta get whatever this situation is at quarterback either he's gotta reconcile whatever needs to be reconciled with casey thompson and and reward him maybe with a, what a start against rice at home, but he's got to, he's got to evaluate these quarterbacks. And because what you're doing now is you're going to play, you're going to play rice. Then you're going to play tech and then you're going to TCU and whoever's the quarterback. If he stays with Hudson card or he moves to Casey Thompson, that guy's got to get settled in by the time they go to Fort Worth and face Gary Patterson's defense. And that's, or this thing can get a little sideways. You know, Steve Sarkeesian said, we don't want to let this loss define us. And, and so they got to, you know, get that quarterback situation figured out and then get everyone moving forward because they're going to be expected to beat rice. They're going to be expected to beat Texas tech. And then, they play TCU 
OU and Oklahoma State back to back to back. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, it's not just TCU they've got to get it figured out for. It's that's where it starts kind of the gauntlet. Now, Oklahoma State uh, looked pretty bad today <laughs> against Tulsa. Uh, but still, I mean, back to back weeks of at TCU and then versus Oklahoma, that's going to be that we we pointed to that all year that, you know, this game was going to be a tough one. And then that the, um, you know, the opening slate of Big 12 play is going to be a tough one for Texas, especially not having a bye weekend until I think it's uh, October 23rd. So they've got to get this figured out, Chip. You're right there. And, you know, because the reality is the defense did its job for the first half. And Steve Sarkeesian gave a lot of credit to the defense, you know, in his post game. But you can't expect a defense to do everything. I mean, you know, the best defense is one that's not on the field. You know, I mean, that's that's the reality of football. And so the defense did what it asked, it was asked. And I, I appreciated this, you know, just a quick note on Steve Sarkeesian for acknowledging that because I feel like every single time that Texas lost a either a close game or lost a game under Tom Herman, he would talk about the defense negatively when he was an offensive minded coach. And not, and there were plenty of times where it was the defense's fault, but um, he, he very rarely took, put, you know, the blame on the offense where Steve Sarkeesian straight up said, you know, he doesn't necessarily blame the defense for kind of falling off and later in the game because they did that, you know, they were tasked to do a lot and they were on the field way more than they should have been. And they were doing their job and the offense was not helping them out. And so they were, you know, after some point, the fatigue, you know, definitely sits in, whether it's with the starters or backups with how, you know, many plays they did have. So definitely credit to the defense to start that game. But, you know, the offense has to help it out because the defense probably looks way worse in the, you know, at the outcome of the game that it really did play because the offense really did not pull its weight at all. Yeah. And, and look, this is, um, this is going to be uh, an interesting week because um, I, I think a lot of people were asking the question about why do you not, you know, um, look at your four-year quarterback in that environment. And and Steve Sarkeesian is going to feel the heat for the first time. This is, this is the first time he's tasting the adversity at Texas where fans want to know, you know, they're second guessing him. Let's put it that way. And, and so let's see how Steve Sarkeesian handles that as well and, and how this team bounces back and because they, they absolutely should bounce back uh, against Rice and Texas Tech uh, the next two weeks. And then let's see where they are heading in uh, to Fort Worth, OU, and Oklahoma State. Uh, and, of course, Iowa State lost to Iowa again uh, this week. So... The Big 12, which added four new members on Friday, uh, takes a hit in, you know, from one of their big, you know, from one of their top 10 teams with Iowa State losing. So and Texas, obviously, having just moved up in the polls, getting hammered by Arkansas. So lots of time to recover, lots of time to figure things out. This is a good coaching staff uh, that should be reflected in their week of preparation for Rice. Yeah, for sure. And there's a lot of work to be done. I think, you know, there were no excuses made in the end of the game. I think that's something that's always a blessing or a refreshing thing, I should say, for to hear after what we went with for the last four years. So not hearing yeah. the excuses was good. Um, but there's definitely a lot of work to be done. There's no doubt about it. And we have tons to talk about coming up here on the flagship podcast, Chip, uh, in the next few days. We are Currently, it's 1224 a.m. Sunday morning. So that is how dedicated we are to our flagship podcast listeners. And if you are not a member of Horns 24-7, definitely go on over, get the annual membership, get 30% off so you can read all of the team site boards as Texas prepares for Big 12 play. And also, um, you know, if you're watching us on the Horns 24-7 YouTube channel, we appreciate that. If you're not, head on over there. Our video brand is going to be expanding a lot in the next few months. And so definitely make sure you subscribe for free to our Horns 24-7 YouTube channel. Hit the bell to make sure you get all the latest Texas videos and notifications for those when they are posted. 
Taylor, my birthday occurred while we were recording this. Oh my gosh. This, Happy uh, birthday. Podcast. So <laughs> we're we're dedicated. We're working on our birthdays. We're doing it all. I would um, see for you if it didn't scare away our listeners. So I no, will just pretend no to worries. say happy birthday to you, Chip. Hey, Taylor, thanks as always for all the work that uh, you do for Horns 24-7. For Taylor Estes, I am Chip Brown. Thanks so much for listening in to our uh our podcast reacting to Texas's loss at Arkansas. Uh, as Taylor said, we've got a ton uh, each and every week right there on the Horns 24-7 platform and on the Horns 24-7 uh, YouTube channel. So we'll see you at all those places. And until next time, stay safe and keep the faith.